Hi, welcome to Broken Bushcraft. I'm Adam. And today we're going to talk about a Swedish fire log. But before we do that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and comment below. Okay, a Swedish fire log, what is it? Well, during the Swedish, the 30 year war, um, resources were limited. So they needed to have a way to cook and heat their troops with using the resources they could find on the land. Uh, so Swedish fire log works really well with green wood. Uh, with dry wood, it burns a little fast, but it has a chimney effect. So I cut this one with a chainsaw. So you see it's kind of like a pizza, my favorite food. And you cut about, I don't know, almost three quarters of the way down. So this way the fire will start here and then burn down and it will fall into these cracks and this way it heats that wood and burns for longer. So a self-sustaining um, source of fire. It's safe from wind, safe from the ground if it's snowy on the ground, and you can cook on it, you can heat yourself with it. Remember if it is like a, any kind of wood with a sap, you're gonna wanna stay away from cooking directly over it, but if it's like an oak, cherry, maple, beech, uh, you can directly cook over it. So you wanna know what's in the wood so you're not getting that on your food. So we're gonna, this is one I cut with a chainsaw. Um, you can use a handsaw if you want, it takes a long time. Or there's another method to do it. I've already split this log into three parts. So I have, and it actually worked out well as I split it. The middle part kind of fell out like a chimney there. So that, that's kind of took away something I need to show. So I got three parts. I have the one part here, it's three cuts. Cut it once, separate this log. And then cut this one in half. And then if you have sharp edges here, like sharp edges here, what you're gonna simply do is take your hatchet and you're gonna shave that off. So I don't need to, but I'm gonna show you how to do that just so you guys kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is this tip right here. I'm gonna take my hatchet and now I'm gonna choke up on the grip here so I have more control of the blade and I'm just gonna take some of that off you don't have to work all, don't work all the way down because um, you want this down here to be there to catch the fire so keep your fingers clear of it so just making a gap so the fire can fall down it another way to do this is you can just lay it down and then chomp into it if that makes you more comfortable just remember where your hands are, where the blade is, choke up on it. Because if I'm trying to work this from out here, I have too much room for error work and slip and, slip and get my hand. So choke up on it and just chop away. Okay, so there's the log that you'll start, we're gonna start the fire up here and it'll fall down into there. Now you're gonna definitely use a fire starter for this. Um, I'm gonna use fat wood. So I'm gonna put some fat wood in there. You don't wanna, you want the fire to fall down into it. You don't want the fire just to stay here. Um, if it does though, as long as it's burning down, you're fine. Now how are we gonna hold this together? You can use 550 cord. Uh, I'm gonna repurpose from some wire that I found. Um, I like you know wire wrapped around so we can reuse the wire later on depending if it gets burned up. But eventually this fire, this log, since it's not held together, and it's not all together like the other one is, is gonna open up and split and fall apart. So some wire around the middle section or some 550 cord or a strap that you wanna get rid of um, can, use, can work fine for this. So I wrap the wire. Uh, so I wrap the wire around. Now you're gonna see this kind of fits tight in some of these spots. You want oxygen to get through there. So what I'm gonna simply do <clears throat> is there's like scrap pieces from where I split wood. So all I'm gonna do is, I didn't wrap the, the wire tight. I'm just gonna create some space in here. So these will act as kind of shims to open up these gaps so air can flow through here. So the question is gonna come up, where did you get wire from? Well, I found this in the woods. Um, apparently there were some forts behind my house at one point where they used wire. 
Uh, there's chicken wire back there, there's some wood back there, so I'm just trying to repurpose it. But I also grew up in New England, so it seemed like every house had barbed wire at one point, and you could find it pretty, pretty prevalent around the area. Also, if you're in the Midwest. But if you don't can't find a wire, then like I said, you can use 550 cord, um, you can use a belt, whatever. But if you're using something that you're gonna need later on, you wanna make sure you remove that so it doesn't get burnt. So I've created some space in here, so now the oxygen can flow, and let's get the fire started. Okay, so I said, light the fire on top and let it fall in. We're gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to light it and then push it in. There's some fatwood shavings inside there. I have some right here, so. So let's light this one up like a match. Let's push it down in there. See if it stays lit. So the uh, fatwood's still burning, but there's also the, you can smell the oak is burning now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, this on here so I can start boiling the water. Now, some of you guys asked what this was. This is my fancy, because I'm fancy, this is my fancy coffee press because I drink a lot of coffee. We still have boiled water. It's still burning. Remember, just because there's not flames shooting up out of it doesn't mean it's not hot. It's putting off a lot of heat right here. Um, I got my fancy French press. I've already made the coffee. So it's just another way for you to utilize your resources or, or conserve your resources without burning through them so quickly. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the woods.